Greetings everyone, I am Lotus Prince, and for this Let's Play, we are going to tackle Clock Tower for the Super Nintendo. You know, technically, Clock Tower isn't really for the Super Nintendo. Officially, it never made it out of Japan, as far as I know. It certainly didn't make it to America, so it really should be for the Super Famicom. The only reason I'm able to play it is that I have a repro cart which means that someone took the ROM file of the game, put it onto a Super Nintendo cartridge, and made it so I can play the game on an actual console. Which is pretty refreshing, because other than that, I would have no choice but to emulate the game. So it's cool to see that, number one, a fan translation exists, and number two, that the game can be played in the way that it was meant to be played. Clock Tower is a really interesting game. America got the series, including the PS1 sequel, but we were never informed that it was a sequel, and I don't think we figured that out until later down the line. So we're going to take a look at how the series started. It's strange. It's a Super Nintendo game, and it's a point-and-click, and yet it remains one of the creepier horror games of its time. It actually ages pretty well. It's pretty creepy even today. The game knows how to use sound and music, a lot of times, there's no music whatsoever, and all you can hear is your own character's footsteps moving through the hallways of these creepy rooms in this overly large mansion. The basic premise is that you are one of three orphans who is being taken by your caretaker to people who have chosen to adopt you. And, of course, things go wrong just about as soon as you go into the mansion. The, your caretaker leaves and then just doesn't come back, you go looking for her, turn back, your friends are gone, what do you do? And then the game really takes off. You'd be interested to see this game's mechanics of how you avoid threats and you can hide and run places and manipulate objects. It's, at least to me, pretty advanced for its time. I don't know if other games really did anything like this until the PlayStation 1 era. So this will be interesting to see. Oh, and as an added feature, if you are familiar with Dario Argento's movie Suspiria, you might pick up on some musical references and even thematic ones in terms of game presentation. One of the first times you see the antagonist of the game, that might be a little telltale sign right there. So watch out for Suspiria references, if you can. Oh, and uh, one last little thing. This game introduces one of horror video games, big icons. You know, we're talking, everyone's heard of Pyramid Head, everyone knows about Dracula from Castlevania. We have a Clock Tower villain as well. He might not be quite as big as the other two, but he's up there, and it will not take us very long to meet him, so look forward to that. Oh, and uh, on top of all that, this game has branching paths and multiple endings, so I'm going to go through this game several times because there is lots and lots of stuff to see. A lot of replay value for what's otherwise a relatively short SNES game, so without further ado, let's go crazy. Human Entertainment Twelve O'Clock I do kind of like how it's coming with each chime of the clock.
there you go. So we have the game start where we watch the opening prologue. We have quick start if you just want to immediately get to gameplay, just do what you have to do. Continue if you stop in the middle, I guess. Ending list. A through H. That's a lot. And then we have the option of going from stereo to mono audio. Let's go right into things. Game start. Let's get the context of what's going on in Clock Tower. Raised in the Granite Orphanage, Jennifer and her friends... Ooh, this music. ...were wanted as adopted daughters. It happened in September. This is some intense music for Super Nintendo. This is serious. Laura, hurry up! We want to be there before sunset. Those are kind of sweet graphics. Miss Mary? Yes? From now on, what kind of place will we be living in? That's the fifth time you asked. Don't worry, it's a very nice place. We're almost there. See? Hey! This place is huge! What a huge place! No kidding. Yeah! The main hall's gigantic. Wow, what a mansion! I gotta go get Miss, Miss Barrows. Everyone wait here. So I guess Miss Mary's leaving. Okay, and we're playing. And believe it or not, this is how we play. This game is kind of a point and click, if you could believe that. Now, I cannot make use of all the controls yet. I can press L or R to move right now, but in the real gameplay, L and R run. What I'm supposed to do is point and click at whatever I'm supposed to look at. Or in this case, talk to people with. Or talk to people, whatever. So A doesn't do it, was it Y? Hey, Anne, you want to know what kind of guy Mr. Barrows is, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, I guess I gotta talk to her again. I thought they would kind of continue that. Hey, Anne, you want to know what kind of guy Mr. Barrows is, right? Alright, let's... Let's talk to someone else then. What is it? Is something wrong? This house makes me uneasy. Yeah. Fair enough. I think I gotta talk to everybody twice just to get ourselves in the mood here and to allow the game to continue. I doubt I'll ever get used to this place. <laughs> Lots paranoid. Okay. Let's give our friends a second talk each. Hey, can you go find Miss Mary? Okay, and there's the prompt, but I have I think I actually have to talk to everybody to be able to do it cuz I tried this, I gave this a dry run before and I couldn't get anywhere and it was boring. <laughs> What happens to Miss Mary? And now to finish it off. 
Mary, she's taking a long time. Should I go find Miss Mary? No, I'll go look for her. Don't worry about me differentiating voices. Most of the game is going to be just Jennifer, and there's very little dialogue. It's just like what you read when you look at stuff, for the most part. And we're through the door. And it's dark and creepy. Oh, I'm actually playing for real now. Okay. L and R don't work. Whoa. The main hall. Girls? Come on, this isn't funny. Now, if I had done quick start, I think we would just be put right here, which is quite convenient. Thank you, Clock Tower. One thing I didn't tell you about is, of course, this game wouldn't be proper horror without some kind of threat. You'll notice that my portrait, I can't move my mouse over my portrait, but it has a blue background. As I do worse and worse, it'll go to other colors, like yellow, red. I don't have health, it's more like stamina. If I get attacked, I kind of, I can kind of like beat the attacker back off of me, but the worse my stamina is, the less of a chance I'll have of actually being able to do that. So it's kind of health. So let's go, actually wait. I forgot how this place was laid out. And by the way, yeah, that's how running works. Running's a thing. Oh, X makes me stop? Oh, X makes me stop, okay. So, yeah, there are a couple of places in this game that can make things pretty scary. Oh, that's my idle animation, I guess. That's kind of smooth animation. There are two really cool scenes, but you can only get one of them per playthrough. Also, this place is big. Also, I probably shouldn't run quite so much. Maybe I'll... That's creepy. Yeah, this game is very good with sound. It's pretty creepy when you can only really hear your footsteps, you know? And yeah, I know my walking is painful, but running will reduce my stamina if I do it enough. That is crazy, and that's very Suspiria, by the way. Holy crap, and... I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Oh my god, that's so scary. At this point, I just want to hide. And I don't really know... Oh, okay. Lock the door, cool, I was wondering about that. All right. Can I hide in the shower? Can I go anywhere? Oh, I evaded him. Yeah, here's the thing. What's super scary about this game is that evading him like that was not necessarily a guarantee. Like, sometimes he might try the door. It's really unnerving. No playthrough is exactly the same. You can go through the same steps to beat the game, but you might have to do different things to evade this guy. And, uh, I'm a little late on this one, but meet... Wow, the body's gone. But meet one of the, uh... Oof. One of horror's iconic video game enemies, the Scissor Man. Didn't take long to introduce him, did it? Forget this, I can't deal with this, I'm running. And I'll just pray I don't run into him. What a freaking nightmare, huh? See, I'm, I'm yellow now around my portrait. Okay. So I'm in like a barn or whatever. Oh, 
Oh, there's a car. Okay, let's uh, whoop, let's go in. It's open. Oh, the keys aren't here. All right, let's investigate stuff. There's a shovel which I cannot interact. This is a key. A car key. That was easy. Pocketed the car key. Yeah, it's this kind of game. Believe it or not. Like I told you, it's a point and click. Isn't that weird? Okay. Let's get out. The keys aren't here, but well, no, no I, I, I know, but do I have inventory? Start, select, A. Oh, weird. Okay, I didn't realize it. Did okay. Huh. I can get out of here with this car. But the others, yeah, I don't know where Miss Mary is, and one of my friends is confirmed dead, but the other two are not. I would be abandoning them. But that was a scissor man. I'm not dealing with this. What should I do? Yeah, this is the game telling. Like I tried using the car key twice, and the game's telling me no. But I'm doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> Just bust through the door. That's pretty badass. Look how cool that looks. Credits. That's that's one of the endings. That's like the the feel terrible ending. I basically just abandoned my friends because I'm not dealing with this. Yeah, I beat the game. Quickest LP ever, am I right? Good thing this game has a ton of endings. Plus, you get to hear that cool music. And yes, I am going to let the credits play because I'm not sure if anything, like I'm not sure what happens if you skip it or whatever, or if you even can. I know the opening prologue cannot be skipped, but I don't know. Let's see where this goes. Jennifer, we got monster design, object design, Dan and Bobby. Mary. Friends, hooray! Background object. Back ground design. All right, all right. Yeah, visual scene. Again, that break into the glass cutscene was like, again, Super Nintendo, that's pretty sweet. And it's really intimidating. It's so early in the game that it kind of gives you this impression like, this is the kind of game you're getting into. I hope you're ready. Face graphic, the face graphics do look really cool. Graphic helper. Oh, and by the way, um, I'm really late in telling you this, but don't let this uh, ending fool you. The better the ending is, the longer you have to go through the game. Obviously, I didn't explore a damn thing. I think I went into, like, three rooms or something. This game is of reasonable length if you're going for a good ending. I went for the absolute worst possible scenario, just so you know. There are lots of rooms in this game, actually, so there's that to look forward to. Okay, it looks like the credits are over. Oh, actual movement cutscene. Oh. Bad end. Isn't that cool? That's actually one of my favorite endings, because it really gives you a proper, like, this is what you get.
And just for the record, by the way. Got it. Well, that puts me in a good mood. I think I'll go for a different ending. Quick start. Look at that. How convenient is that? I love it. So, this time I'm going to do things differently. Of course. I'm going to be, uh... A little bit good this time, if I could. Again, I really shouldn't run too much, though. So I'm going to have to do this a little bit more uh, delicately, I think. Again, I apologize for my walking speed. I'm doing this for my own good. Yeah, I think this was supposed to be a hint, by the way. That loud noise. So this time I'll investigate it first. Yeah, see, here's the same bathroom I was in before, but this time everything's all steamy. So I guess it's occupied? Whoever's occupying it can't be that bad, right? I mean, like, there's no way the scissor man is just in the shower. Although I will risk pissing off one of my friends by doing this. Except one of my friends is already dead. Laura. And there's like a Nightmare on Elm Street reveal. That's pretty terrifying. That's so creepy, oh my god. And you see my eye for my portrait? This is the part where I get the hell out. And I, I cannot control my speed. Alright, there we go. Now I gotta find a way to evade this guy, which sucks. I don't know where he's coming. How does he... This game's ridiculous. Um, I, uh, can I, can I hide under the bed? It's so cool that that's a thing I can do. Let's hope it's a successful, oh my god, evasion. Please don't look there. <gasps> don't even tell me, the parrot? It didn't give me away, did it? No way! Good lord, that's... That's... That's crazy! I didn't even think about that! Wow! This game... There's no evading this- I, I'll try the bathroom again, I'll see if I can lock the door. I don't know if this will work though. Can I hide in the shower or whatever? I just have to wait this out, I think. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like, what do, what, what, what do, what, 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 I have to bulldoze past him, I think. I don't know, I think I was supposed to mash B or something, but like, that didn't help me at all. I never did figure out what I'm supposed to do to get past him, I had full health. And that's not an ending, by the way. That's just game over. I'll try that again. But wasn't that cool? Well, now you know what happens if that's a thing. Jeez. If I can hide from here before he saw me go in, do I win? Because I don't know what to do if he busts in. Oh, I lucked out. I lucked out. Oh my god. Okay, that avoided him. Or evaded, or whatever. I avoided him. The thing with this guy is you never know how he's going to act, and I don't even think you necessarily know when he's going to come up. Oh, the light switch is broken. I wasn't going for the light switch, but that's fine. Now I can do different things. 
this game's scary, man. It keeps you on edge. That's actually something I really like about it, is that there are so many ways to just do anything. I am not touching that phone, I'm sorry. So Laura is confirmed dead. Lot and Anne, I don't know. Let's check out this hallway. God. I don't know. Ooh! Brutal. So Anne could have died one of two ways then. Through the ceiling or out that window. I think we're done here. And I'm actually going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to take the car and get the hell out. The logic behind this being the slightly better ending is I think that this time two of my friends are dead and not just one. So, I yes, I'm still abandoning somebody, but not as many people? I, I know, it, it still does not make me a particularly good person. I'm going to go ahead and get that car key again. Uh, I did not want to do that, but it's cool that I can. I guess that's another way to evade the scissor man. I can hide in one of these bales of hay, I guess. You really gotta wait for your character to finish moving. This is a key. A car key. Good. All right, now I can do uh, this thing again. Car key. So once again, I'm gonna make the bad decision. I can get out of here with this car, but should I, of course, you know? But the others. Yeah, my, my friend Lot and Miss Mary Laura and Anne are both dead for sure. This game is brutal. What should I do? And then the, uh, the grand finale here. I'll get my icon out of the way. Alright, let's see if I fare any better. Same ending look, right? Okay, and those are the credits. And so, Jennifer returns to the orphanage. She was discovered in her room three days later. Dead. Yeah, this game doesn't mess around. Brutal endings. What a downer way to start this thing, am I right? But with any luck, I'll slowly work my way up to better things. I mean, yeah, I died, but at least I made it out of the mansion. Maybe next time I won't die? High hopes? But for now, it is time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We took a look at Clock Tower. Really did not explore the mansion very well though, did we? We found interesting ways for our friends to get killed. And for us to get killed. Yeah. We're not we're not the best survivors, are we? But that's okay. This game has many endings, and we've only covered the two worst. It's only gonna get better from here. Maybe in a manner of speaking, but better nonetheless. Until next time, everyone.